Welcome to WHHI Daily News. I'm Ellie McNair, and here's a look at your headlines. A bill to give up to six weeks of paid parental leave to school district employees unanimously passed in the South Carolina State House of Representatives Thursday and was sent on to the Senate. Proponents of that bill say it's one of the easiest and cheapest ways to recruit and retain teachers for which the state has a critical shortage. Last year, the legislature gave other state employees paid parental leave. Now, if this bill is signed into law, South Carolina would be the only state in the Southeast to provide teachers with paid time off for having or adopting children. Well, the man whose reputation was probably enhanced the most through the Alec Murdoch trial, Judge Clifton Newman, hasn't said much since, but he did go back to his old law school this week and told students that he wasn't surprised that the jury took less than three hours to convict Murdoch. Newman got his law degree from Cleveland State University nearly 50 years ago and said the deliberation time was actually about normal considering jurors had been paying close attention during the entire trial. Now, Newman will be inducted into the law school's Hall of Fame this fall. Because an appeal has been filed, Newman can't talk about his decision or whether Murdoch should have testified. But he did say that since he's nearing retirement, he'll be able to play himself if there's a movie about that case. The 17 huge palm trees at Buford's Chambers Waterfront Park are sick and they might have to come down, pending a report from a tree doctor. A local arborist recently inspected the trees and his report could doom the Washingtonia palms for safety reasons. That particular species of palm doesn't like the cold and periodic freezes in the low country might literally be their downfall. If they have to go, they'll most likely be replaced with the more common sable palm, the state tree of South Carolina. Well, when women buy feminine hygiene products like tampons or pads in South Carolina, they pay a sales tax, but a proposal in the state house could change that. A bill that cleared the House Ways and Means Committee unanimously this week would take away the so-called tampon tax, costing the state about $6 million in revenue and local towns about $1.5 million. If passed through the legislature and signed by the governor, feminine hygiene products would become the 84th exemption to state sales taxes that already exclude groceries and prescription medications. 23 other states already exempt feminine hygiene products from state sales taxes. Well, it's a sure sign that it's beach season in the low country. Hilton Head Island's free trolley season starts this weekend and runs every day through Labor Day. The trolleys will run from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m. five days a week until 11 p.m. on Friday and Saturday nights, serving every stop every 30 minutes. There'll be a South Island route running between Shelter Cove and Caligny Park and a Mid-Island route from Shelter Cove to the Folly Field area. You can find out more by going to breezetrolley.com. And the changing of the calendar to April means a change in rules for your dogs on Hilton Head Island's beaches. Beginning April Fool's Day, you can still walk your dogs on the beach, but they must be on leash between 10 and 5 p.m. They can be under positive voice control the rest of the time until the Friday of Memorial Day weekend when pets are not allowed on the beach at all from 10 to 5 through Labor Day. Now, you can still walk your dog at Fish Hall Beach Park any time of the day throughout the year as long as your dog is on a leash. Now, if you'd like more information on these stories and more, be sure to check out the news sources on your screen. And if you have a story idea, please email us at news at whhitv.com. With a look at sports, here's Justin and Jarrett. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. Hilton Head Prep's girls soccer team has been one of the most consistent winners in the Loco in recent years, but the Dolphins faced a tough test last night when they had John Paul II visiting Sea Pines for a Loco on Loco showdown, and LocoSports.com's Wes Kerr was there to capture the highlights. The Golden Warriors gave the Dolphins all they wanted, but 8th grader Ashley Brothers scored a hat trick with assists from Bren Miller, Haley Klinger, and Cala Dando, and Hilton Head Prep held on for a 3-2 win, handing JP2 its first loss of the season. JP2 got some revenge with a 4-1 win in the boys' game, and Bridges Prep's boys remained undefeated with a 5-0 shutout of Bethune Bowman. We also had clashes between the top two teams in the Region 7-4A lacrosse standings, with Hilton Head High squaring off with Lucy Beckham last night. Beckham held off Hilton Head's boys 16-13 and routed the girls 16-3 to solidify their status as the region's power. May Rivers' boys picked up an impressive home win, though. 
pounding James Island 19-3 behind 7 goals and 4 assists from Whit Beebe to tie the program's single game record with 11 points. Highlights provided by May River High School student Eileen. Hawkins. On the Diamonds, Hilton Head High Baseball held on to beat Central Magnet 11-10, Somerville down Beaufort, and John Paul II and Thomas Hayward split a doubleheader, while JP2's softball team beat Battery Creek 11-9 and Bluffton lost a slugfest at James Island. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco. Thanks a lot, Justin. Now with our weather, here's Maria. Thanks, Allie. Yep, so taking a look ahead, we are going to see more rain going through this weekend and going into next week, but the temperatures are going to start climbing once we get into next week. Taking a look at Saturday, it's going to be cloudy with a heavy thunderstorm in the afternoon, but it should be clearing up by the evening. Hill and Heads give a high of 78, a low of 66. Bluffton's going to have a high of 81, a low of 65, and Buford's going to have a high of 80 and a low of 66. Come Sunday, it's going to be partly cloudy and pleasant with a drop in temperature a little bit. Hill Nights give a high of 70, a low of 58. Bluffton's give a high of 73, a low of 55. And Buford's give a high of 73 and a low of 57. The sunrise for this weekend is going to be at 7.11 and sunset's going to be at 7.43. Taking a look at the beach tides, Saturday low tides going to be at 2.07 p.m. and high tides going to be at 6.52 p.m. And then come Sunday, low tides going to be at 2.47 p.m. and high tides going to be at 7.48 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the week, Monday it's going to be cloudy with scattered showers throughout the day and it's going to continue on into the evening. Highs are going to be in the 70s, lows in the upper 50s. Then come Tuesday it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy with some scattered showers throughout the day but it should be clearing up by the evening. Highs are going to be in the 80s and lows in the 60s. And then come Wednesday it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy with highs in the 80s and lows rising into the upper 60s. That's it for today. Let's hit it back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. When we come back, we go to the center of RBC Heritage Operations. Stay right there.